Hey everyone, welcome back to my shop. My name is Chris. Well, today I'm gonna give you a glimpse inside 30 feet of French cleat heaven. Now, this is the first of three walls that I'm gonna clad with three quarter inch plywood. I'm gonna give you my thoughts on, is it worth it? And also, we're gonna discuss some of the newer additions to the wall. So, some things are old, they were in my last shop, they just transferred over, and that's another beauty of a French cleat system, is that you don't really have to build anything else. They can just move on over to wherever you install this. But there are some new things on this wall too, so we're gonna discuss those at length, and I'm gonna show you some ideas, and hopefully you guys can get some inspiration to get organized with this system, because I love it. So let's just jump into it right now. Okay, so I'm excited to do this, but not quite as excited as this little one. Oh man, it's been a dream to have these children in this shop with me and I can actually close off the backyard. They can run around, it's, it's fantastic. All right, but that's neither here nor there. You're here for the organization. So I'm gonna show you a couple things. First, we're gonna start off by, it's not a cleat wall, but I've got a place here to organize my levels. I'll show you a few details here. And this is the beauty of setting up any workspace and really it never does end, does it? We're always trying to tinker and fix and do things. So this is how I have hung my levels on this wall here. And again, this is not a permanent solution. I'm gonna give you that right now. This, well, these are yard tools and these will eventually make their way into the pump house. Uh, yeah, we're on a well, so a pump house is typically something that houses the well, just in case you don't know that. Um, anyway, I've got a few rocker things here, some screwdrivers, my tunes in the shop as well, and my charging system. This is gonna change. Uh, but for now, this is what it is and I'm pretty happy with it. So we're gonna move on. A little bit okay oh one more quick detail about this now I do listen to tunes in here and I use my phone to do so but unfortunately I film on my phone so I can't show you in this in action but this is a phone holder and of course you orient the phone this way and of course you charge it through here but these little pieces are here so you can I don't know, watch a video on occasion and put it in landscape mode um, these chargers are fantastic I think all brands are doing this now where they put a USB port in the bottom of them, which is super handy, so thanks to Makita for that. And then this is a new addition to the French cleat wall where you just simply have cubby holes for charged batteries. I typically have uncharged down here and charged up here, and that way I know what's what. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So like I said, let's, let's move on. Now what you see behind me is some of the organizational techniques we used in our last shop in the garage. The marking tools and the power tools over here and also I've continued some of the power tools over there now, I'm gonna tell you that I didn't have those battery-powered nail guns before, but I figured I'd put them up on the wall. I got a lot, of, a lot of inspiration from two channels about French cleats, and I'll link them down below. It's Drew Fisher from Fisher Shop and Clinton from Specific Love. Those guys are what I consider the French, French cleat kings, if I can say that correctly. Uh, a lot of inspiration is drawn from those guys, at least here in this shop, so I'll link them down below. But I'm gonna show you a couple details on these tools, which to me, make them pretty unique. So let's check this out. These are battery powered nailers. This is a stapler. This is, a 18, this is an 18 gauge brad nailer. And the construction of this couldn't be simpler. Okay, I mean, honestly, you put a cleat on there, you put some support back, a support piece here, and then you just attach it to the wall. And these two pieces are attached with some screws and glue really simply. And I basically used, basically used this as a template to it just like that really simple okay but this one this one's actually pretty cool I use this one a lot more than I use this this, this brand nailer is all over the place in the shop so the idea all right the idea is that the battery can be installed and also taken out at the same time these two blocks and this one of course are all that's needed for this there's a little bit of a cutaway this is actually to support the back of the nailer and you put it in front first. And in doing so, this back part here allows me to take the actual battery out. The rest up against there, pretty handy. So I like this, I like this idea. And again, I wanna thank Drew and Clinton for hooking me up with some inspiration on these. Sometimes painting with water is what we need to do, right? I agree. 
So I really hope you guys don't mind me sharing these moments with you. You know, when it's nice outside, the back door stays open. These kids come out free and easy whenever they want. And of course, they're only two and three years old. You're gonna see my son here just in a second. And they're not gonna be doing too much in the shop, but it's nice to get them acclimated and it's really nice to have them around. And of course, if I'm working on something, I always stop what I'm doing just to hang out. All right, so my, my little assistant here informed me that I need to build a new French cleat inception wall, which is cleats on cleats, which are cleats on cleats, <laughs> right? So we're gonna do a new adhesive section and let's go ahead and build some of that now. So on this piece of plywood, you might see some circles there. Those are basically different size epoxy pails or you know, those plastic pails that you kind of mix almost anything in. I've got a stop block set up here. After I've cut my pieces to the right width, I need to cut them to the right length. So I'm doing that now on the table saw, pretty easy. And using a nail gun and some glue, we're just gonna kind of build a tray to hold these plastic pails. What you're seeing me do here is take it to 400 grit sandpaper. I almost always do this on every piece just to kind of break the edges and make it a little bit easier to handle and it makes it feel nice. Using my nail gun here, something absolutely crazy happens. Now everything's okay, but if you follow me on Instagram, you already know what happened here. I'm gonna explain it now in the Instagram video. Check this out. Okay, so I always do this technique. So if it's ingrained in me because, well, bad things can happen if you don't. And what that technique is, when you join two pieces of wood together like this, like this with a brad nailer, and you shoot the brad nail in like this, sometimes you can have your hand up top and you can shoot the brad nail in. And you may think leaving your finger there is okay, but it's not. Every once in a while, something bad can happen. A brad nail can go squirrely on you. So I always lift my hand away, shoot the nail, and then put it back down. This is what happened. So yeah, that would have hurt. You might see the look in my face here. I'm just kind of baffled at what just happened. I ended up pulling that nail out with a pair of pliers and just kept moving on, no problem at all. Anyway, using a little bit of CA glue and activator, I'm just gonna go ahead and put some partitions in here, nothing real fancy, just pieces to segment these little pails out. And then we're gonna put a couple of stop blocks to really make them fit nice and snug. All right, moving on to the adhesive section of this new shop. Um, basically, this is actually one of the uh, cleats from the old shop where this drip tray has proven to be really handy over time. And these nozzles, when you finish mixing, your, when you finish pumping out your resin and your activator, activator, your, uh, your, your hardener, um, they drip a little bit. So having these, this little catch tray here with a little tape, proven to be really great over time. Now, this section is new, and I figured I would get all of the things that you need, the mise en place, right? The things that you need for mixing resin and dyeing resin different colors. So let's just start off with, yeah, I mean, I mean, I tried to make things really satisfying here. So, you know, when you take popsicle sticks and put them in a French cleat holder, that looks really cool. This is really satisfying as well. And <laughs> for foam brushes. And now we've got some pigments. Now, if you've ever worked with these bags of pigment from Black Diamond, they're great, but they get all over the place and they send you like a pack of 20 when you order a, um, a variety pack. And they can just kind of take up a lot of room and they can get lost. This is actually giving me a place to see what I've got. I can actually pull them down. I can pick through what I want and put them back. I like it. Now, they offer pigments in a variety of larger containers. And these, these are great too. And this is just a little, little tray with a little lip holding it in place. Gloves as well. I don't think that the big box of gloves is necessarily all. Uh, it doesn't need to be on this wall, but I like this little holder. And it holds various types of gloves in here. And again, this is just something that is satisfying to make as well. So if you have a shop and you like tinkering, get out there and do something like this and you'll be rewarded. It's really great. Now, I call this French cleat inception, which is cleats on cleats. This whole system is actually by itself. So in case I wanted to move any of this, I can. It's not all individualized, but yet it still is. And then of course, down here at the bottom, we've got sections for four different types of pails that are typically used in epoxy. And I love this thing. 
So give me your thoughts on this. I do want to see, is this as satisfying to you as it is to me? Let me know. Oh, one more little cool thing I thought I would mention is that for your CA glue, if you, if you get CA glue from Starbond, which I do recommend you do because I have a code for this, uh, all my coupon codes for all the products that I've featured in this, if, if applicable, are down in the description as well. Uh, I believe you can see, say, 15% on this stuff. But when Starbond ships you out some, some CA glue, with each bottle comes multiple lids or multiple applicators, which is smart because they eventually, over time, you still have glue inside here and the applicator gets kind of gummed up and whatnot. But I came up with this little solution here to store them, and I thought that was pretty interesting as well. And now here is just kind of the rest of the stuff. We got a tape holder. We got some clamps, of course. I've got clamps down here, up there. And I've got a light. Now, I'm gonna give you my thoughts on why I've installed a light in the shop like this. But I'm gonna show you how I made this little holder. So let's do that real quick. So we're back to the crosscut sled here at the table saw. We're gonna cut some plywood down just to a couple different sizes. Now I'm using the actual lights base and this plastic pail to draw some circles. And basically there's no measurements here. I'm just using the actual light itself to build what is gonna hold the light up on the French cleat wall. So after tracing these circles onto these pieces, I'm gonna cut them out on the bandsaw. The blade is a bit too thick to make all of that in one pass. So I'm doing it in sections, trimming it back on the table saw just a little bit, and then I'm gonna finalize it here at the disc sander. So I got the light from, yep, you guessed it, Ikea. I use some Ikea stuff in the shop on occasion, as you might know, I actually made a workbench, kind of a hybrid workbench using some Ikea storage containers. You may have seen it. If you haven't, I'll link that below as well. But this is pretty simple. You take the three screws off the back. I'm gonna attach the first disc with some countersunk screws into the plastic itself. We're gonna trim this up to size. It was just protruding out just a little bit too far. And again, we're gonna attach a 90 degree with another piece of plywood with some Starbond CA glue and activator. And then we're gonna attach it just with one screw. I, you know, I, Starbond is plenty strong. I just, on occasion, like to reinforce things with screws. And then the same thing goes with the back cleat as well. We're just gonna add one cleat here, let it set up a little bit, and then reinforce it with a couple of countersunk screws as well. So with the cleat built, I wanna ease the edges quite a bit, a little bit more than just hand sanding. I'm using a quarter inch roundover bit on my palm router here, and that gets the job done pretty nicely. So to attach it, we simply just put some CA glue down on the wooden circle that was attached to the base of the lamp, and then attach it with two countersunk screws. All right, pretty simple, but herein lies the beauty of this design is essentially you can wrap this thing around your, your tripod as well. <laughs> but it really, it kind of creates, oh, one fewer. It kind of creates it kind of creates it kind of creates a cool aesthetic having that cord wrapped around there so many times and of course it's neatly tucked out of the way and pretty simple to build or to assemble if you like we don't want to spoil that yet and there you go so there's your light now let's turn these lights off and really get the full effect so this is just one of the lights i plan on putting these kind of all over the shop and once that's done I foresee a place in this shop that not only is it going to be nice to hang out, we're going to do maker meetups here, here in Jacksonville, Florida. And when everything's said and done and you just want to hang out and not build anything, having this as an ambient space, I think, is definitely one of the things that I'm looking forward to. The camaraderie with different makers, I think this is going to add a nice touch. So I do want to know what you think. Does this have a place in the workshop? Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. Is this worth it? Is putting hard surfaces along the walls of a shop worth it? Especially Baltic Birch that's three quarters of an inch, pretty high grade stuff. Now I told you in the previous video that this is gonna cost me around $1,100 to put all these sheets up 10 feet tall all around. Now, is it worth it to me? Well, that's kind of subjective. Not to me, but to the general public, I think. 
Knowing that I can go attach anything on these walls at any given time is pretty special to me. Never had that option. I've always had to worry about finding a stud or who knows, you know, you, you miss them. You never know what you're gonna find. Sometimes stud binders don't work. I mean, it's just, it's just the nature of the beast. So I think it's worth it. It's a lot of money, don't get me wrong. 1100 bucks is, is quite a bit. However, your priorities gotta be where they are. Some people like to fish. Now, I'm not a big fisherman. So I'm not gonna drop 200, $300 on a lure, maybe two or three times a year. Maybe I put plywood in the shop. I'm just putting it in perspective for you. So I love it. I wanna know your thoughts. Is it worth it? Is it worth it to you if you're a maker or do you think I'm just a little crazy? Either way, I'm gonna now take you along the other section of the shop, the shop you don't see, the section you don't see right now because it's what I call the unglamorous side. So let's go look at that now. Okay, so this behind me is what I call the unglamorous part of the shop right now. Uh, as you can see, there's various tools up on the wall. They're all on mobile bases except for that drill press right there. Definitely gotta remake something. Thinking that's gonna be a project video as well. I've got my lathe with, the reason there's extension cords above the lathe is that's a section where I can clamp an actual light. A lot of times when I'm working at night, I roll the lathe out. There's really no lighting up there, or at least there wasn't in my last shop. Uh, there is now, but those little things that protrude out of there that you see those cords hanging from, that's where I clamp like a big floodlight that I got from Harbor Freight to kind of you know illuminate the work surface. Uh, to the right of that is a Laguna dust collector and then a Delta 1940s, 1950s original color disc sander. That thing is huge, it's a beast, I love it. I need to change the sandpaper on that, but that thing is amazing. And my planer is a Rikon helical head planer along with the Wood River, what is that thing called? Spindle sander. Um, and then my bandsaw, which I've had for a long time. And again, this is not the most glamorous section of the shop, but I do want to say this too. Um, I do have my jointer over here, my window AC unit. We're going to try that window AC unit for now. And then as you can see here, that is some of the same plywood decking that this is. I get a lot of questions in case you don't know, this workbench that I've had for a very long time is made of Teak and Holly yacht decking. Um, a salvage yard here in Jacksonville, Florida called Eco Relics. I'll link their site down below. They used to have a bunch of this stuff and I picked up about six to seven sheets of it. I was very fortunate to get my hands on it. Uh, it wasn't exactly real cheap, but it wasn't expensive either. I mean, brand new, that stuff's like $300 a sheet for a four by eight, but they had it down uh, around 100, maybe 80 bucks a sheet at one point. So I went ahead and grabbed some and I'm glad I did because I really like the aesthetic of it. My crosscut sled's made of it, my bench, and my last shop had a big cabinet wall that was made of that stuff too. Um, this is the, what I call, again, the unglamorous section. Plywood's going all around and I'm gonna cleat this stuff too, believe it or not. And we're gonna just kind of slowly get this process going. And I appreciate you guys joining me for the ride. Uh, I do wanna say one more thing. There is some stuff over there. Yeah, yeah all that stuff over there. That's, that's really cool. This YouTube thing is pretty amazing. That's some sponsor stuff coming up. So I'm not gonna give you too much information about that. But anyway, guys, I really appreciate you joining me for this shop update. I'm glad that we were able to go on this journey together with this brand new shop. If you haven't seen the build on that, I'm gonna link that down below too. And again, my name's Chris. I thank you so much for joining me, guys. You guys are absolutely amazing. In the past month, we have what, 21, 21,000 new subscribers in the past month. This shop has generated so much so much positivity and so much attention that I can't believe it and I'm just humbled by it. And all your kind words and all you guys interacting with me, I very much appreciate it. So moving forward, we're gonna give you more updates. I got some projects coming. I got an outfeed table for my table saw. I will say this, check that thing out. It's just a, uh, I don't know, a dilapidated wood table with a piece of plywood on it. Definitely, definitely gotta get that done. So outfeed table, drill, pet, drill press, mobile workstation. Those are some of the things I have on deck. All right, so stay tuned. And again, you're gonna see the updates on this shop too. My name's Chris, this has been A Glimpse Inside. I'll see you guys on that next project. Until then, take care.